Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, oh, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things we found going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and that is Pedro Mateus, and everyone Hi. at home, man, taking that <laughs> midweek break with us. Yay! What's going on, people? We've uh, been doing a lot in the pre-show, if you're watching live, it's like, let's mm -hmm. rebuild OBS live while uh, <laughs> we're doing that and all that fun stuff, man. It's... It's been interesting. It's been interesting over here. I hope everyone's having an at least a very interesting, if not good, week. I know um, I, I'm still on this journey to get the mm -hmm. uh, Blackmagic Quad playing just right with our system. I have kind of set up like a Game of Cards, House of Thrones type situation within Blackmagic. And I'm like, we're, we're going to see uh, That's what you were going for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see, it, <laughs> Those of you who might uh, listen to our pre pre super shows and pay attention to it, um, I know. Hi, <laughs> you're just done. I mean, come on, I know those shows. The, um, I've gotten a hold to a developer, so we're talking back and forth because I genuinely believe that they've never tested this under Linux. It's just a boom. Okay, it, it's supposed to work. So he's like, yo, I'm going to test it with an 8K. We're on lockdown. All I have is an 8K. And I'm like, oh, it's going to eat tremendous amounts of poo with an 8K. <laughs> this was like three days ago. We were talking back and forth, exchanging until I got that last email. And then we're like three or four days away. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you tried it, <laughs> didn't you? It didn't work, did it? <laughs> so we're keeping track of that. I hope it's software. Oh. I hope it's a driver issue. And I hope I don't end up having to RMA it. But um, this is also, we can do some more stuff and I'll be glad when all that's sorted. And unfortunately like option two, like Majewell makes a quad, but it's like 900 bucks, man. That's not in our budget right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Stay tuned. What's up with yes. you, <laughs> Yeah. So I had a fun time once again on Linux Unplugged over at Jupiter Broadcasting yesterday and also had fun chatting in the Destination Linux Patreon-only chat on Saturday. That was really great. And some of the most fun last night, watching our very own Ven in an interview on Linux Spotlight with Rocco. Yay! Ven finally did it! <laughs> <laughs> you know, Aww. from what I heard of Ven, is like, oh, I needed an excuse to test something. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this was available. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone out there go and, and watch it <laughs> and have a good time. <laughs> it was the same. What's new with you, Pedro? <laughs> uh, it's warm, which is, I guess, is new because it, this is mm -hmm. the UK. It's never warm. And if it is, it's raining. But today it isn't. It was sunny. It was still stupidly humid because it is still the UK, but uh, it was very, very warm. And, um, yeah, no, outside of that, it's, I guess it's getting boring again, because now that people have started to realize that, oh, this working from home thing, we can do this. This is convenient. Mm -hmm. So the tickets to the uh, Surface Desk have uh, come down a little bit, which is nice. <laughs> nice, mm. man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, awesome. let's get into some interesting news. Starting off, yes. <laughs> yeah. YouTube content bootstrap fun, um, sourcehunt.org. So they got an idea, man. Uh, they're going to be committing 5,000 to bootstrap content for the PeerTube network. If you're unfamiliar with that, it has set itself to be hopefully, hopefully something that will be an alternative to YouTube. A couple of conditions for this, man. Uh, you must not already be a regularly <laughs> publishing content to on another platform, anything like that. You can only upload videos to PeerTube, so it's kind of like login, and they have yeah. to be Creative Commons, CCBYNCSA. All right, that's fair enough. And they expect you to make at least five videos. You decide uh, creation isn't after that, we'll take the equipment back, and you'll be off the hook once you start earning at least $20 a month on LibrePay. We'll split the ongoing cost of hosting. That's just another thing. That's the issue we ran into with PeerTube. I'm like, you know, I'm happy to post the videos there, but I'm not paying. I already pay for hosting. If you want to download our mm -hmm. videos, you can download it directly from us. So, you know, I like the idea. I do. But I do believe that uh, they're going about this completely wrong. Because yeah, if you want to help out people, if you do, who, who've already taken like the initiative, shown the initiative that I'm going to do this and I'm trying. You know, that 
what do they say? The 99% inspiration, 1% perspiration. When somebody comes to, hey, then I have an idea. And I'm like, I have more ideas than I have time to do. That's easy. Ideas are easy. It's yeah. doing it, sticking with it, and trying to make something 10 years later. Hi. And you're doing that. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about us. We're way outside of the scope of this project. But the system that they're kind of setting up, man, is like, give some people some money to see if they want to do something. Then they're going to have the logistics nightmare of, oh, well, we want the stuff back. Good luck. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that's not going to fly. <laughs> no. I don't know. Uh, I, I just uh, think like 99% of the people who start something like this or would be interested in this and they really want to do it, they'll end up like, uh -huh. hey, this, this is a lot. And I'm not, I'm just being honest. It's a lot of work. And yeah. that might mm -hmm. not be in their schedule. Yeah. And, you know, like Vin says, this sounds great, you know, out of the box, but drawing existing creators from the likes of YouTube who are already creating content actually would be a better option. And, you know, PeerTube has been actually working on the ability to stream live content, which is really awesome, with integration in the OBS. Once they do this, I think a lot more people would use the platform because uh, that's one of the major things. I think preventing people from using it and you know this uh, this would be the first decentralized option for going live other than you know twitch and youtube and some of the other pro more proprietary platforms mm -hmm. and you know there is another uh, another decentralized video content service that has actually become very popular which is library and um i've it would, seen it library would... plugged a lot by people who are on it and that's it mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's come check out my library and that's it just them <laughs> i'm finding a lot of the linux youtubers are are putting their content on library including rocco mm -hmm. wish them the best of luck yeah <laughs> yeah no i hope it takes off <laughs> yeah me too because this <laughs> I, I really wanted to take off, just like Mastodon. <laughs> I love it. I love. We're still services. waiting on Mastodon, so I hope it takes <laughs> off a lot better than. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm on there, and I never go there. <laughs> we have our own Mastodon instance. And, yes. Yeah. Thanks, Civic. <laughs> I send my tweets to Mastodon. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, it, it's an interesting proposition. I mean, if you're going to bootstrap something like that. Uh, Good luck with it. And I just yeah. wanted to put that out there and let everyone know if it's something you're interested yeah. in. You're like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Good. I love being proven wrong. You know, yeah. Get you some coin, get you some equipment, and be the next rock star. That'd be brilliant. But be awesome. We can't go a week without Pedro saying something about his favorite distribution. <laughs> well, it, might as it is a distribution, effectively, now. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> thanks to uh, Ubuntu's decision and uh, you know, their disagreement. Right. <laughs> no, that 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 is right. No, it's slightly off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a, a bit missing there. there <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, no. Um, KDE Plasma five nineteen is now in beta, and the final release will be coming on June 9th And yep, yeah, it is basically um, if you're um, running the dev branch and uh, KDE Neon, you're far, far braver person uh, braver person than i am but uh, uh -huh. yeah you can give it a go uh for those of us over here in you know the user uh iso uh we'll wait but uh nine to five Linux actually has a bit of a quote from the uh developers and they say in this release we have priorit uh, prioritized making plasma more consistent correcting and unifying designs of widgets and desktop elements worked on giving you more control over your desktop by adding configuration options to the system settings and improved usability that that that's been due for about 19 major releases now so <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> it's good that yeah. they're doing something but it, oh, yeah definitely. no that that needed to be a bit of a uh, priority earlier on not now. Yeah. <laughs> Unify are, are you really a stickler about that? Just everything needs to look because that that no, is just. No, I'm talking like, about the improved usability. Yeah. Why are you using something that's not usable? <laughs> <laughs> 
It is usable. Uh, if you disable the compositing and you use Compton instead. Well, I mean, that's XFC. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> so yeah, KD is very much on that same boat now. <laughs> Coming up on a decade later, Compton's like, rating ship. Still got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, but I've kind of changed my mind on that a little bit because now I don't even run a compositor. I just run a force full composition pipeline with my NVIDIA card. And I'm done. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. If it weren't for the fact... To me. Yeah, and uh, I would do that with KDE if it weren't for the fact that it is expecting some compositing ability uh, happening at the uh, X level, not at the driver level. So, uh, yeah, no, some things just outright don't work or freeze or smear. You know, remember the, mm -hmm. the windows uh, dragging the error box across the screen and it's smearing itself? <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. That's why I use Compton. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do we have from Tuxedo? Mm. Oh, Tuxedo Computers <laughs> uh, dropped this on uh, Twitter earlier this week. And Hard Shell Mini Cores. And uh, they do Yay. promise desktop performance on the go with an AMD Ryzen 3000 I'm give them credit. desktop credit. That looks CPU. like a real product and not a 3D render. Yeah, that it does. is a real product. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy it right now. And uh, yeah, no, it's the uh, Tuxedo Book XA15. It's a 15 point, uh, it's not standard ish size for a 15.6 uh, inch laptop you can tell it's a chonky boy and that mm -hmm. is because it supports amd ryzen 3000 desktop cpus yes. um and it the motherboard that's in it is an actual uh, b450 chipset board and you know because i very much liked what i saw i went to the um a thing and I built myself a version it's like okay 3950x 16 gigs of DDR4 mm -hmm. uh, 500 gigabyte NVMe and the 2070 because uh, that's uh, up to what you can get you can get the 2060 and the 2070 and that's 2.5 uh, or uh, 2500 euros mm -hmm. which is pricey don't get me wrong that is pricey but I spec'd out an actual desktop um machine and as soon as i put in the um 2560 by 1440 144 hertz like the panel on the uh xa15 book it's like oh that's 2100 mm. euros that's not far off which is very good <laughs> 2100 so, yeah, euros no. for a high-end laptop is not yeah much. not bad at all yeah <laughs> And I know you, I'm assuming you get I like laptops. 144 hertz screen. <laughs> like, oh, it's going to be so great. Mm. Oh, I, it, it, <sighs> yeah. If I had the money, I would have bought it right then and there, but I don't. So, <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> God, I mean, I'd, I'd like to use this to, re to replace my Asus Republic of Gamers. It's such a sweet looking laptop. And actually kind of compact for, for all the power it has. And being able to upgrade your Ryzen 3000 CPU, because it is not soldered on, because it is a, a desktop uh, CPU, um, is wonderful because you can upgrade it and it's really a nice touch. It's really awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> I was, that, was, that was one of the first things that really stuck out to me. And um, I would use this laptop for rendering as well as playing games because it's really great for both. I, I did find it interesting um, that they chose not to run NVIDIA, use NVIDIA Optimus on it with the AMD GPU and the NVIDIA GPU, um, given that today's Linux utilizes Optimus so well now. But I actually, I understand it. I mean, they would get more battery life, but I understand why, because you get the full power out of the NVIDIA GPU. <laughs> so. Optimus doesn't work well at all on Ever. Linux. Uh, the yeah. only effective way to do it still is to use the NVIDIA driver's implementation, which is god-awful and incomplete, which uh, they call Prime. You know, come on, um, yeah. give them credit. At least last year they <laughs> attempted to do something. Yeah. They tried. Yeah. Uh, but Failed let's just horribly. say that there's a reason that uh, Ven's poster there with Linus um, telling NVIDIA to <laughs> yes. do something to themselves. It says luck you. <laughs> just because it's obscured. It says luck you. Yes. He's wishing them luck. 
Hack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, th let's just say that there's still very much a reason that that is still uh, valid. Because yeah. yeah, no, Prime is not a very good implementation. And most of the like switchable graphics implementations that we have right now, uh, still either you either have the NVIDIA GPU on all the time, just in a mm -hmm. low power mm -hmm. state, but it's still running all the time, or you turn it off and you need to um, basically log out of the session to reload X to get it back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. for the money, that's not um, good. <laughs> it's good to see an AMD option mm -hmm. for a Linux laptop. Yeah. yeah. No, that is yeah. a very nice, very high performance Ryzen Linux laptop. Yeah. It's kind of brilliant. Just keep it plugged mm -hmm. in. Um, yeah. <laughs> something that's yes. going to have a bit of battery life, though. Yay! So the much-anticipated Pine 64 Pine Tab, $99 tablet, is almost here! Yay! Pine 64 is now taking pre-orders later this month for limited quantities aimed at early adopters, much like what they did with their Braveheart Pine phones in April. And the P Pine Tab will ship with Ubuntu Touch from UB Ports, just like the Pine phone. And uh, but they you'll be able to run um, other Linux distros in the future. And I just I I really have been wanting this. I thought it would be a a great device to use for doing show notes because it, it comes. What's really awesome is you can get a twenty dollar magnetic backlit keyboard that snaps onto it, and uh, that would be a perfect uh, companion. So pretty sweet. I'm kind of down with this, man. Uh... You know, they do make a point like, hey, it's really going to happen this time. No more false starts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're going to be doing the pre-orders later this month. That's the thing. It's going to be a limited run. So if you're looking to pick one up, this is time to do it. And it's a pilot production run. So you know what's involved in that. The day's 10-inch, 720p IPS LCD panel. It, I, I don't want it right there because 720p in 2020 on a tablet. 10 inch tablet mm -hmm. that, that's a non-starter um make it 150 dollars and get a re decent resolution but it does have a quad core a64 soc two mm -hmm. gigs of ram which is decent same thing as in the pine phone it does feature the same two megapixel front facing and five uh rear that's on the phone 64 gigs of uh, internal storage is it worth a hundred you know it's a hundred. It's a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. For a hundred dollars, I can <laughs> yeah. buy a 1080p IPS Android tablet all day long, all day. Yes, Android. That's probably sending um, everything you do on it back to China. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. This one will run all the Linux distros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that all of them. again. It, it's the advantage <laughs> of having it. You having an idea of what the hardware is doing because. Pine has actually been pretty good with that. And it's running Linux. Not, well, you could, you could load Android on it, I suppose. Well, you know, but, you, you um, could always realize yeah. that you're also going to be using this with a stylus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, the big difference between the two devices on one of them, I could get stuff done. <laughs> the other one I can play with. Yes, the, 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 this is what these first runs of things are for is for people to play with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm saying it's great. I'm just saying it wish it had a better screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's only mm -hmm. 720p. <laughs> it's only 720p. I mean, a couple of years ago, 720 uh, How long has it been since you've seen? Uh, 720p, maybe at, I uh, got 10 inches. That's rough, man. No. <laughs> yeah, and no. I say that as somebody who's, I've been buying tablets since the first time they came out with something that wasn't Apple. And I bought off brands, I bought Arcos, everything. I have 720p, 10 inch tablets. It's like, okay, I remember these days. But hey, maybe there'll be yes, something later. For gaming, 720p, absolutely. Linux Nuru, the Switch mm -hmm. is 720p. Mm. But. Yeah, the, this is a productivity thing because that uh, SOC isn't particularly powerful, especially the GPU. But it's, I'm going to say yeah. for right now, <laughs> the people are going to pick one of these up, know what they're getting. That's awesome. 100% behind that. And it's it's a device to help to provide feedback. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so exactly. 
And cool. uh, at the bottom of the article, they mention uh, a couple of other things about the um, Pinebook Pro. Namely, uh, that the Manjaro image, if you load that up into the Pinebook Pro, they now offer a Docker container with 32-bit Chromium, that's i386 Chromium, uh, which can play Netflix and Prime. That's very Yay! good. That's awesome. very good. Wide Vine functionality <laughs> on the Pine Pro. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> New release of Enlightenment. Yeah, this is one it's of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> yes, this is one of my favorite lightweight and one of the most beautiful window managers. Just got a major update. Enlightenment 24 has just been released and e boots even faster. There is a new external monitor, backlight, and brightness controls. Yay, bringing it up to modern times. <laughs> and the wallpaper import generates multiple resolutions for better efficiency when setting wallpapers. And a new and improved shot module that includes editor and cropper. And, cropper. and overall, there's just lots of bug fixes, UI polish, and faster startup times. And, you know, I've been using Light Enlightenment for many years to play multi-monitor gaming spanning three monitors because it has many window controls, including save states for window positions for multiple monitors. And that's very important. So you don't have to futz with that. And in fact, uh, what the other awesome thing is this release is better has better support for playing games on Steam. So I'm looking forward to testing that out. <laughs> As in, uh, <laughs> the games no longer actively crash when you try to yeah. launch them. <laughs> this is the only problem I've had um, with Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. And I, I dip my beak into Enlightenment at least once mm -hmm. or twice a year. It's not mm -hmm. stable. It's not. I yeah, mean, people it, it does have if issues. you're like, yeah, it is, I'm like, you haven't used it hard enough then. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't actually tried to use it, you know, as well, you would. <laughs> okay, in all fairness, if you just let it boot to desktop, you're like, that's eh, fine. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, oh, it looks pretty. Okay, time to log out and log into a proper <laughs> sub environment. I've always been a fan of the look and the aesthetics of it. I mean, it's a, it, it, it's held on to the 90s very tightly. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, speaking yeah. of, just to be contradictory, I like the new flat team. Because they have mm -hmm. the that screenshot on the um on the article, it's like, oh, oh, that doesn't look like it was made in 1999. Come yeah. on, you, don't tell me you don't want the default material design Nixie tube clock. Aww. Oh, the the fake 3D with yeah, the, the buttons glowing, that you hit on them, and yeah, you can and they, feel the mush as you yeah. click on it. It's like, how do you do that? It, it's like an OSX <laughs> interface from the wrong side of the tracks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, with each release, yeah, I, they've really fixed a lot of the issues. So every year, it, it is improving better and better. So. Good I did try, uh, like, yeah. looking. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I go to distro watch for nowadays. It's like, okay, I need a distro that has version 24 of Enlightenment. It's like, oh, PC Linux OS and Gen 2. Oh, mm -hmm. wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I have it loaded up, um, which I might. We don't get to do this too often, but mm -hmm. we have a Microsoft Bob's Linux segment. <laughs> oh, um, boy. We do. Kind of okay, surprising. Okay, so this one's this pretty one. big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is bit. huge. So DirectX, Arts, Linux. And um, before you go, wait, what? DirectX is coming to the <laughs> Windows subsystem for Linux. And what they're doing is they're uh, creating sort of a virtual GPU inside uh, WSL that allows the WSL to use the DirectX um, layer that Windows already has implemented. So this isn't, you know, giving full DirectX 12 functionality on Linux yet. But uh, I very much look forward to that being the case. Uh, the the way that they did it, it's basically the same way that um, many other virtual GPUs are currently implemented. Uh, it uh, exposes uh, the X, uh, DXG device in dev DXG, as you would expect. And so the... Um, Mesa drivers can pick up on it and use that it, because they say, ooh, that can do... Um, 
3D acceleration, so I can use that. And then it basically gives um, the Linux kernel in the WSL the ability to, well, have DirectX access. And they, there was one little line um, mm -hmm. in the article, just like, because I started reading, it's like, oh, okay, so it's just a way to virtualize the GPU in the WSL. All right, fine. But then I read, these binaries are compatible with glibc based distros. Like, all right, put it in my face, like, now uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah they go on to say that and technically any distro could make use of this if the driver that you have uh could expose that level of functionality on your machine say you have an nvidia gpu you know that it can do DirectX 12 it's just the linux drivers for the nvidia cards would need to say oh this thing can do direct x12 so there you go well, it's not and then just dx12 we're looking at it's also going to be able to handle vulcan and you're going to mm -hmm. be able to deal with cuda yes yeah, which is also important Yay. um this is a very interesting development this is one of those curious things now i understand pedro after they've um released in some of the patents on fat32 microsoft's your new favorite company they can do no wrong but but uh, X fat, but close enough. <laughs> Typical Microsoft fanboy. That's what I expect. <laughs> I apologize for not having such intimate knowledge of the Microsoft. Um, now check it out, man. Uh, imagine how easy it'd be to get Windows integration in Linux if. Some of this yeah. nonsense was open sourced on Microsoft's mm -hmm. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, because you can go, Microsoft, look at what we did. It's like, yeah, all you had to do was do it. I mean, yeah. the instructions <laughs> got it right there, man. Yay. Um, but yeah, no, I do uh, the hope that even if they don't do it, I hope that the community uh, picks this up and goes, let's improve wine. Let's make wine actually work properly. <laughs> The Linux integration, plus the other thing yesterday, did you see that they're getting a package, a command line package management yes. system? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's yeah. like they are Win coming. Get. <laughs> yeah, when get Screeching and screaming <laughs> into like 1996 on that Windows. Um, pretty tight. Mm -hmm. Pretty decent. I, I, I really wanted, uh, that was the point that I wish I knew um, Monster Cameron personally, because mm -hmm. that would be, would have been the point that I'd pick up the phones like, so? Oh, remember uh, what you said <laughs> about, you know, software management on Linux versus Windows. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Pedro, 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 Pedro. You, have to, you would have to use a terminal to use that. Therefore, you'd have to be a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is there anything sadder than somebody with a Windows terminal open? Like, oh, <laughs> Oh, uh, pat him on the head. Feel bad for him. Buy him, buy him some cocoa. You know that uh, if they've gotten to that point, they are serious about trying to fake something? <laughs> they are. Yeah. And they look back with the deadness of somebody who's stuck in a job. Like, hey, man. Yeah. <laughs> with a slight point, like, take me out. It'll be great. <laughs> well, there's no more need anymore to use VMware to run Linux with GPU acceleration. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy well, maybe that'll help some of the game ports we get yes <laughs> yeah that, that was what i was mentioning yesterday on discord it's like okay so after the community is done with this mm -hmm. what's going to be the excuse still gotta yeah. go down the linux store exactly. and buy that computer to run. <laughs> oh no it's just middleware it's always going to be middleware oh man yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> One extra bit of um, Redmond news, though. But it's good news. Mm -hmm. The flip has flopped. Um, yeah. yeah. We've talked about this on again, off again relationship yes. with Microsoft. <laughs> Back to open source is the latest sign of Germany's political sea change over proprietary software. This is from ZDNet. All this is going to be in our show notes. But yeah, what, let's see. What does the quote say? Where it is technology and um, financially possible, the city will put emphasis on open standards and free open source license software, a new coalition agreement negotiated between. So wasn't this like Microsoft come back and like, yo, man, come on, come on, we'll get you some sweet deals. Then like the new intern government 
It's like, yeah, that sounds good. Somebody's going to get some money. The agreement was finalized mm-hmm. Sunday. The party's been empowered 2026. Uh, yay. I, I don't know, man. I, personally, <laughs> personally, I, I genuinely believe like um, any government product system and all that should be forced to use open source software, completely yeah. transparent. Yeah. High Especially NHS. if it's a government thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, this this is like the third time we've covered this. I'm like, just make up your mm-hmm. mind, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like hopefully this time open source and Linux will actually stick um, when the Microsoft contracts expire. And that's a really, really awesome thing. And it seems that Germany has learned many lessons. And this time they will roll out Linux correctly and transition correctly this time. <laughs> Let's hope. <laughs> keep in mind that the migration back to Microsoft was going to be like uh, estimated like 86.1 million euros. And that's the yeah. progress. And this is after they did all the initial work to get over to Linux. I mean, this was yep. what we were reading way back in the Slashdot days, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, they said is that government that made the change to Linux, it's like, oh, yeah, five years after we made the change, we're already not incurring any costs compared to when they had to pay for the Microsoft licenses mm-hmm. because. At that point, they were almost self-sufficient. Unfortunately, uh, a lot of people stuck uh, with Windows because, you know, it's a municipal mm-hmm. government, so it's not going to be um, completely unified. Everyone kind of does what they want. So there were a lot of systems that were running both because they needed both Windows and Linux um, because they needed mm-hmm. that compatibility. And, you know political and financial maneuvering were the reason that they went back to uh, Microsoft in 2017. Political and financial movement are going to be the reasons that they're going to change back. And some people are saying they're yeah. only doing this because they want a better deal from Microsoft. It's like, all right, probably. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Munich, my brothers and sisters from Deutschland. Just to see if you can strike, find, find like the corpse of Sko and see if you can use that and just make everyone angry. <laughs> yeah. Xandros. <laughs> Just Xandros. Force Xandros on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Doing all terrible stuff. Hey, everyone. Uh, if you like what we do, you want to support what we do, you can do that. Linuxteamcast.com. Uh, there's a support button. We got a bunch of stuff. Patreon, LibrePay, merch, uh, PayPal. We got wish list and what? Oh, Bitcoin. That's the whole thing. I hear the kids are still using that. Uh, we got some t shirts. They're kind of neat. We got the hell hogs. We got the faces. Weekly, daily, Wednesdays. We got. Mugs, chairs, stickers, and hoodies just in time for summer. Uh, best way to- <laughs> <laughs> it might be now that I buy one just to be a contrarian. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Uh, best way to support us through Patreon. We've been on that for years. That really helps us out. We get a bunch of levels. You get rewards back. We like to dance for our dinner, and we want to thank each 104 of you helping make thing that, you know, this show's a Patreon goal. And we hit it, and we keep on running about it. So. That's brilliant. Uh, come say hi in our Discord. If you join us on Patreon, you get access to our uh, yes. show notes. If you like what we do, we do an extra hour of content just for the people who are making all this possible. Um, you get a custom RSS feed and some early access to stuff. Up to and including later this afternoon, I'll be posting a, if you're into like all the audio stuff I do, I do a series just on the mm-hmm. side uh, to try to help people out called Interfacing Linux is where I'm picking up audio interfaces and seeing whether or not they explode when you plug them into a big one. So I have a new one of those out for the interface that we currently use to uh, do everything here in the studio, which uh, turned out a lot lot better than I expected. So keep the lookout for that. If you want to end up on this wall, it'll show up in videos. Uh, if you get anything for the studio, that's where you end up. But mm-hmm. fair warning, everything there is stupid expensive at this point because I bought all the cheap stuff. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, too bad, so sad. Now, let's get into Uh-oh. a slice we of We still butter. have some plugs to do. <laughs> oh, well, yes, yes, we do. We yeah, actually yes. have a couple of Patreon shifts oh. and new Patreons. Ooh. Patreon yeah. shifts. Yeah. 
So, yes. and Fox Dog is back as executive producer. He wasn't gone very long as executive <laughs> producer, but he's back. Yay! And we have a new one, Lucid Links, and I actually know who that nice. is. He's awesome. <laughs> And Eldius is back. So no, no. Very, Eldius or, never left anywhere. There's nothing next to Eldius. See, that's where assumption gets yeah, people in trouble. Well, no, no, but I didn't. I looked for him in our Discord, and I didn't find his name. And, See, and you assumed he wasn't a patron. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's what you just said. I didn't. No. I, <laughs> this, this, this could go on forever and so just be like, yeah, okay, I made an Maybe assumption. Maybe he, um, <laughs> he gifted another game. I don't know. <laughs> Aldi sent me a copy of Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought so. Ooh, <laughs> game. The okay. fancy, smancy special edition? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to give this to you because I know you have no time to play it whatsoever. I'm like, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aldius is so awesome. Story. He's he's gifted us all games many times. <laughs> he, yeah. Thank you so much. Him and Arthur. And, yeah. And <laughs> speaking of Arthur, who provided a lot of the the our show topics today, um, he spoiled me and gifted me this cute RGB penguin, which I, I'm sure Vin is not a fan of. <laughs> because it's, it's bling bling. Can't see that it's changing lots of colors right now. But, oh no! Uh, it's doing a number on your camera. That the, we yeah, can see that. <laughs> it's bright. I can turn down. I can actually turn down the brightness. Yep, it's got that remote that uh, every yeah. single bit of uh, yes. RGB. <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly. yeah, it. most of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the camera it comes across as a ghost. So yeah, it does. It does. Ooh, actually, actually, yeah, this remote is a little better than average. It actually has a timer function on it, which is really nice. So he he gifted me this uh, for my birthday. So I closed the wrong window. Uh oh. Ah, <laughs> you refreshed the window, didn't you, Jill? Mm -hmm. I guess I did on accident <laughs> when I reached over. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, um, <laughs> our, our happy birthday, Jill Hart. Um, this might arrive a little bit late, but I found out why I couldn't buy anything. In any case, I hope you will put this lovely boy on a camera <laughs> from Artharon, and, and it's going to go right behind me, Artharon, in a special spot over by my penguins. And, you know, he already gave me a, a gift last week, uh, Steam Game Hack Night, which is really awesome. So he's just been spoiling me. <laughs> All right. Coming up next into a slice of pie, we got a little bit we got to run through. Um, this is from StreamPie.com, though. So Yeah. So StreamPie is a robust, 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 <laughs> excuse me, robust uh, that, that open show title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, robust, <laughs> robust open source alternative to the Elgato Stream Deck, built for the Raz. But this is one's built for the Raspberry Pi and runs on Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. And it can detect all of your OBS scenes, sources, and transitions, and you can you can control them all. And it doesn't require you to set up hotkeys, which is really awesome. And it makes it a lot easier for integration. And it's also integrated with Twitter. So you can hit a button and do a tweet while you're you're on Twitch Somebody or YouTube. buy this man a tripod, please. <laughs> yeah. <I know. laughs> he does start using it at one point, just yes. not for the beginning of the video. <laughs> yeah, just not the beginning because he's moving around his studio. Um, it it's uh, still a work in progress, but the cost of a Raspberry Pi and an official seven inch touchscreen, you can make your with that you can make your own Elgato Stream Deck at a fraction of the price. And yeah, it's you half know, the another, price. It's half the price, literally. <laughs> it's literally half Lit the half price, and you can the, have here's just as many deck. buttons as Ven does. Yeah, right there. Yeah. So <laughs> that's go. the other option. You can use the one that Ven did. <laughs> the the software that he uses. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, this has the uh, added advantage of not needing a Raspberry Pi for curious reasons. <laughs> yeah. This, this will just run on anything with a web browser, period. Yeah. Yeah. Which is yeah. what it's running anyway. <laughs> I guess it's just to have a dedicated device that... Yeah. You it's don't really use nice. for anything um, else. <laughs> and a dedicated vi device for uh, doing video editing is really nice. Um, used to use one back in the day when I was doing lots of video editing. And this is just really, really cool. 
that it was a really nice alternative to the device. It cost $149, I believe, on on Amazon for the Elgato. So this is a much cheaper alternative, and it's cheaper than their their proprietary software that they have for the phone, Android phones as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I saw you salty. I saw what you yeah. did. <laughs> salty. So if that's something you're interested in, go take a look at it. Um, you know, if you get an extra Raspberry Pi that you're like, I need that to use power. And that was... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it's like five watts at most. So. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take up most. You gotta clock it right, Much. man. <laughs> yes, you can overclock it and make it use 15. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, something that would use considerably more power, allegedly, is mm -hmm. the NX mm. series. No, this isn't the best Star Trek. Uh, we're talking yeah. about we're talking about the NX developer kit. This is the Jensen, the new hotness. Uh, Xavier, or just Xavier. Uh, latest module, it's got Let's see, what's in the new one? It's 4, 6 channel, 1.4 gigahertz, and uh, 2 x 8 gigs, so that's like the big thing, dude. 384 nice. Volta CUDA cores. Yeah, man, so you Ooh can do boy. it. <laughs> Look at this. Nice. <laughs> it, it's, it's got a sewing machine fan on the top. That's, yes. That's, what do we have? We, it looks to be an HDMI, possibly, is that a display port above that, maybe? Question mark? Uh, we got one Ethernet jack, four USB, barrel plug, $399, though, so this thing better yeah. do some stuff. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, these are the, the Xavier NXs. Uh, you get two versions. Mm -hmm. You get the 15-watt version and the 10-watt version. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, they're... Mm -hmm. Think of, of them like the mid-range because you have the Jetson yeah. Nano, which is like 150 or between 100 and 150. And then you have the AGX Xavier, which is a thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's, um, then if you, you got something like this, which I was surprised because I really looked into like the Jetson Nano and some, I mean, what you can get away with doing. The you're dealing with the ecosystem. If you want something that's going to have a program for everything, just kind of works out of the box. That's your Raspberry Pi. Yeah. But when you start, but the ecosystem for the Nvidia side, pretty decent these days. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying yes, maybe not yes for 300 bucks for something to play around with. But if you do, you can do more than AI research on a budget. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, definitely. There are desktops that you can play around with and be like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it is very interesting, but the only use case I would have for it was literally to play around with it. So I'm not, you know, I can't even af afford to spend $199 <laughs> on the Pinebook <laughs> Pro. So yeah, no, I can't spend $399 on a Jetson. Sorry. Here's no. a... <laughs> I might get a response from next week, but you know the um, embedded Ryzen with the Vega graphics, that little, little tiny board that doesn't yeah, have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I went through the trouble of filling out their contact um, form oh. to see if I can get a quote for a single piece. Oh, okay. See how eye-bleeding that's going to be. What do you think? For, for yeah, a quantity of for one. This is something they're like, yeah, you know, what are you talking about? Quantity of a thousand, maybe? I'm like, uh, why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just one one. I want a sample. Send me a sample. <laughs> yeah. I, I might have thrown for, for review, uh, but, you know, I, I'll, I'll cut him a check. It'd be something to play with. But I, I'm scared that check's going to be like, you know what? We'll give you a special deal. 1400 bucks. <laughs> I don't think it's that expensive. I think like yeah. just the baseboard with some connectivity and the SOC in it, it's probably going to be like 150 to 200 dollars ish. <laughs> I'm willing to bet a one-off is probably going to be a minimum 500 bucks. Yeah, I think that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe, maybe you know exactly how much it costs and want to tell us, man. <laughs> you yeah. can tell us, yes. You can uh, basically invoice us right now. You probably know our email addresses too. Uh, but if you don't, you can go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. Make sure you pick LWDW as the show that you want to send your feedback to. And we will talk. Well, we will talk to you at you and about you right here, <laughs> right now. Mm-hmm. I. For a moment there, I got a bit lost in what I was going to say, so I had to make up something on the fly. I don't apologize. <laughs> Words. It's about three fifty. <laughs> it was about that time I realized that our SoC was sixteen stories tall with glowing red eyes. <laughs> uh, Pedro, you install weird, bizarre kernels that other people make and talk to me about, like Android tablets and data back. Um, so take this one. <laughs> yes, because I did have a look at the uh, sauce because, mm-hmm. uh, well, Matthew uh, is asking about uh, the Licorix kernel. I came across the Licorix kernel and ha- mm-hmm. am wondering what you guys know of it and what your thoughts about it are. Ow. Uh, <laughs> my thoughts right now are pain. Um, yeah. <laughs> my experience with the uh, Licorix kernel, uh, probably not going to be your case, but that was my experience with it, worked fine. If you have a laptop with just a one SSD in it, it's fine. The moment you start throwing multiple SSDs at it, and let's say you have the audacity to run FS trim to try and clear out the empty space to get those cells back so you can use that SSD for a bit longer, um, it has issues like freezing my whole box at one point. It's like, mm. okay, we're done with the Licorix kernel now. Uh, so yeah, no, that that was my experience with it. That's why I stopped using it. But if you only have the one, I actually have one of the laptops it's but, still but, using. But it's um, got the Z interactive tuning, Pedro, so I can go like 11 fast on the game. Yeah, it's, it's good for games and multimedia. You might, <laughs> well, yeah, no. Uh, run a <laughs> benchmark before you change the Licorix kernel and then run another benchmark afterwards. And, you know, an actual game benchmark just start up like dirt rally it's pretty good for uh cpu give it a try mm-hmm. all right it's gonna take a <laughs> give me a second uh, <laughs> compile that kernel <laughs> but yeah no it had significant issues when i last used it so that's why i went away but maybe you'll have a better experience i don't know <laughs> what do you think joe yeah, I've actually never used it, but I know it's supposed to be better for multimedia and doing video editing and, and whatnot, that it's got some enhancements for that in the gaming mode. Although you can, you know, use Feral Interactive's game mode now and, you know, change the DRI 3. <laughs> that helps. I don't, yeah, I'd be curious if, if your FPS is any faster than actually. That's default in 2004. It's yeah. DRI 3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I build my own kernel so it's very difficult to hear either of you from the top of this tower hipster (laughs) (laughs) that was me shouting up at the tower (laughs) yeah it was awesome it's kind of neat you can do it again if you want tickled uh you know what your basic stuff you're not gonna notice when when you're thinking like oh i'm gonna do some audio stuff and you're thinking about you're gonna do it and that don't bother audacity you're not gonna notice any difference and stuff like that we're talking about real time uh preemptive stuff with gaming it's gonna be you're probably gonna end up with more headaches than you would with your regular kernel this is not some magic stuff your stock kernel just desktop kernel it's gonna run just fine now if you're looking for something to do, go for it. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. it'll be an experience. Just don't do it on the computer that you need to work. No, with. Uh, do nope. it on the only computer that you have. <laughs> that way you will learn. <laughs> you will learn to fix it. <laughs> At that point, you might as well install Arch. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, there's a strategy there, Pedro. Once you get a system set up to the point and you're a normal human being who never backs up anything, then 
you really need to get it fixed because you don't want to spend a long time getting it set up. Then you, later on in life, you learn to just take snapshot images. Yeah. Yeah. Then you just torch <laughs> yeah. stuff to the ground to watch it burn sometimes. You're like, ah, let's see what this does. Ah, uh, yeah, that broke. All right. Uh, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> I'll go make some tea. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. Uh, we look forward to your feedback next week, but we're going to roll the incorrect credits. And get out of here. Yay, Yay. Wrong credits. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yay. Hey, credit. Still got it's credits. It's sugary. It's a sugary park <laughs> mine. <laughs> oh. oh, you weren't kidding about the wrong credits. Okay. <laughs> what? Did you think this was like, oh, I had this third show I hadn't told you about? I, I thought it was might have just been last week. So I don't know. <laughs> No, they get overwritten. It's oh. the same credit file that just renders out. Oh, okay. All so right, I don't all right, have to have right. multiple sources <laughs> loaded in OBS to help save those few bytes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks I want to thank our executive Foxy. producers, our advisor, mm -hmm. Haplo, but we have our theory and empty atomic ass, Mike G. Barbara, and mm -hmm. Mike Geek, Scott Frostclaw, Drummer 7, Lutris. Lutris. Libra Crest. <laughs> dash, 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 dash. <laughs> horse you missed producers the last horse. 18 dashes. <laughs> 23 dashes. Can't you see your eyes, bro? <laughs> Dirty Dean, Nasavoni, Kai Linux Cast, Colin, Ryan, Linux Noob, System T, Douglas, Thomas, Mr. Amish, Jupiter Broadcasting. Oh, Jill and Steve. There we yeah. go. <laughs> there we go. It's been on there for years. <laughs> das Geek. Dodger. In Oxford coma. Yep, coma. Yes. In coma. Coma. <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> bye. Bye, bye. Aww, bye, everyone. Love you.